Our next presenter, uh, Dr. Yindo Hu, uh, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you uh, as a first time presenter, I believe, at, at the Video Services Forum. Yes. And um, we are very glad that you took, uh, took advantage of our offer to make a presentation to our group. Um, yeah, I believe you're going to talk about a benchmarking standard to bring quality bandwidth and latency in a common measurement domain. Okay. So first of all, I I like to thank uh, the members here at and the uh, coordinators uh, for the uh, for making this um, uh, this uh, uh, these conferences available. Uh, you know, we've been working on the uh, the topic of benchmarking for quality for some time, and it took a while really to find the right forum to be able to present uh, this kind of a thought. And you know, based on the, you know, the um, the, the the study and the, uh, the 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 topics that's been going on uh, through these uh, uh, this, this forum, I find this uh, forum to be very um, uh, very um, very constructive for the industry and for the um, for uh, for the uh, for the, uh, for the uh, technology group here. So with that, let me first introduce a little bit. Um, of myself. I've been in the uh, industry for over 30 years. I've been working uh, to start with compression uh, during the early days of digitization. And from there, uh, I moved into a lot of the implementation uh, 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 subjects specifically for video compression and transmission. Uh, at that time, there was a lot of issues associated with quality when we brought digitization into the analog world. Uh, and then uh, from there, uh, bandwidth and uh, latency were some of these secondary issues. Now bandwidth obviously was a big one that plays directly into the, um, the requirements, but latency has always been something that we had to neglect given the fact that quality and bandwidth has served to be a very big challenge. Okay. now. Uh, before I go into the details, okay, uh, I do want to mention that this work was done or is currently being uh, being carried out uh, both through myself uh, here at Carnation Communications and also with Jimmy University. Uh, Dr. Uh, Wu is also one of the teachers uh, at the university that we've been jointly building out uh, not only some of the concepts but also the various uh, implementations. Okay, so ah, now let me kind of give some background and some motivation in terms of this topic. I need to make sure that I don't overrun my time. So, uh, and I do want to give some um, some um, some time for questions and answers. We are uh, we're definitely looking for feedback in terms of some of the kind of the. Uh, the, the thought process and the, um, the steps forward. Uh, a lot of the concepts here are very, um, um, shall we say, first timers, uh, first time uh, uh, concepts that we're presenting. The hardware has been uh, relatively new, even though we have made it available for uh, almost a year. It has gained very little visibility given the fact that we've been, we haven't really been uh, uh, presenting or pushing in terms of promotion and publicity. So this is almost the first time that we're doing a formal a presentation uh, into an audience, which I think are, which, uh, which, which is relevant. Okay, so, um, uh, so coming down to the subject, uh, quality, bandwidth, and latency. Now, the reality is that uh, I think that very few work has been done in bringing all three of the parameters together. They are actually interrelated in the sense that as you increase or improve on one, uh, one of the other two components will have to be sacrificed. Okay, uh, let me try to go through some of these slides here. Okay, so <clears throat> what we do see is that as you increase one, you tend to push out the other. So. Uh, what we have seen uh, is that uh, bandwidth has been taken the top priority. So typically through bandwidth uh, need, 
uh, we sacrifice quality. Latency is almost always not mentioned, given the fact that uh, through a, um, uh, you know, the, the typical end user is a human, and human has generally been quite tolerant in terms of latency, uh, even in teleconferencing scenarios, which we once thought would be relatively sensitive, but in reality, we humans are quite tolerative. Okay, uh, quality. Now, quality, we humans are also quite uh, um, a tolerative in the sense that we could tolerate a, a, a quite a significant amount of quality degradation. But bandwidth, on the other hand, is is fixed. That's a technical uh, uh, constraint, which has been uh, a bottleneck. If you were to go over a uh, constrained network, like through a satellite, or in a congested uh, a network where uh, everyone is fighting for data to go through, bandwidth plays a critical role. So, uh, through the um, through the decades, we have seen bandwidth and quality go back and forth uh, as uh, the bandwidth uh, 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 gets restricted. We see that we try to improve, uh, we degrade in quality, and then we have various compression standards. And then vice versa, as quality gets degraded, uh, we see that the bandwidth starts increasing through the new technologies that becomes available, maybe uh, gigabit ethernet, and then the wireless, we have the 4Gs and then the 5Gs. Okay, so. Ah, so the way we see it, okay, now here comes the kind of the, uh, we're, we're, we're trying to quantify and classify the various components associated with the various um, uh, parameters. So in the inside, you see that the resulting parameters, which is the quality, the bandwidth, the latency, but what are the parameters that actually influence these? We see them as six, the six generic groups. So, um, well, the first one I'd like to mention is the content. And the content is where you could have a, a, a number of different contents. You have talking heads, you have even fixed uh, you know, images, or then you can have uh, you know, a, a sports event, which is extremely dynamic and active, okay? Depending on the content, uh, it will eat into the parameters, okay? You have the... Um, the network we just mentioned. Okay, the network uh, can be, uh, it could be a point to point, it could be a multi point, it could be a switching based network. Uh, 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 anything related to the transmission, I'm classifying them and grouping them into the network. Okay, we have the uh, format. I'm jumping around here, I'm trying to dynamically, you know, prioritize, shall we say, the relevance or the significance format. You know, we have the SD, we have the HD, we have the 4K. They all play into the uh, the need for the the uh, the three parameters. Okay, uh, we have compression. Uh, that is a uh, you know you have the various um, compression methods uh, in terms of uh, reducing the, the 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 bandwidth. Okay, I'll go into uh, details. Uh, there's there's a independent slide for each one of the topics. So. Uh, let me try to not go into too much detail on each one here. Okay, so um, we have the implementation, uh, specifically how you implement the compression or how you implement the network. Uh, this can actually play a significant role given the fact that the compression and the network can be, uh, it, it, you know, may be that it's a, it's a standard, but depending on how you implement, you could, um, you could reduce or improve the capability of these standards uh, directly. Again, okay, finally, the protocol, it is associated with the, um, you know, the particular um, um, a wrapper that you have used or how you communicate. Is it a, is it a one direction? Is it a, um, is it a, um, um, a, a forward error correction? Or is it that you have to have, go back and forth through a handshake? Uh, that directly will play into affecting the parameters also. Okay, uh, let me quickly go through the, um, uh, uh, the six, and following from that, I would like to cover the, um, shall we say, some of the um, uh, solutions uh, out there. Okay, so compression. Uh, as I mentioned, there's there's a, there's a number of uh, uh, compression standards out there. There's the MPEG, the good old days, and then we have the H.264, H.265, huh, H.265. 
is typed wrong, page 256. Okay, so, and you have uh, a number of proprietary ones, a VC9, you have the uh, Microsoft uh, standards. They all play, they all have their uh, benefits and drawbacks, but what they do is that they're all affecting the bandwidth and the, um, the quality and the latency, okay? Uh, contents, well, obviously, uh, a still versus a, um, you know, a, a, a sports uh, a action sequence, well, they take uh, drastically different bandwidths in order to uh, encode them. And, uh, you know, grass has always been something that I love to use to look at the quality of compression and delivery. Okay, so um, we have four mass variations. I think we are all aware of the, 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 the shall we say, the developments from 480p or 480i all the way to now 4K. I mean, we're, we're talking about like a 12-fold increase in terms of data content, okay? Uh, implementation approaches, well, uh, we know that compression, uh, uh, I'm a big fan, you know, uh, <laughs> of compression and the implementation associated with that. That's just been my kind of forte, but uh, 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 here we know that implementation is a huge, huge um, uh, determining factor in terms of uh, balancing the parameters, including latency, right? You have the, you know, depending on how you implement the, the, the compression is a, is a very, very complex and, and computationally de demanding um, uh, um, algorithm. Uh, so depending on your implementation, you can make it really, really poor in terms of compression, or it can make it really good. Latency also is a huge, huge factor in terms of if you start reducing latency, <coughs> You can, uh, you know, you can significantly reduce the uh, the, the 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 capability of a, of a compressor. Okay, so um, I love to talk about this topic, but let me try to move on here. Okay, so uh, network types. So, well, there's a lot of networks uh, solution out there. I mean, the previous talk uh, was uh, Carl mentioned was 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 an IP network. We know there are a lot of other types of networks out there. Uh, we have the wired, we have the wireless ones. Uh, you know, there's a satellite distribution, uh, and, and now there's a, there's a, there's a number of those OTT uh, cloud solutions out there. Um, but you know, the ATMs, those were the good old days when switching was, you know, was was thought to be a necessity or determinist, a deterministic switching was thought to be a necessity, and um, it uh, no one talks about ATM at all. Okay, so uh, find, uh, protocols, well, there's a number of protocols. We have uh, uh, broadcast-based, uh, something like the UDP, or you have the handshake-based, which is like a TCP, but they all play into the role in terms of uh, bandwidth utilization, uh, latency, okay? Um, latency is a big one. We know that a handshake will significantly increase the latency because you need a handshake. Uh, and then, uh, um, whereas uh, something that is one directional, even though uh, uh, including with uh, error correction. So uh, here's, a, here's a very good example where you could say that depending on the protocol, if you have a handshake, well, you'll increase the latency, but you will in, uh, improve the, 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 the quality because you have less data loss. And then you have the other scenario where you could have something that is uh, um, uh, one directional, a broadcast based, uh, but you have FEC, forward error correction, which will increase the bandwidth, reduce the latency, and keep the quality. But what you have done is if you sacrifice bandwidth to improve the quality and the latency. Classic, classic uh, trade-off example. Okay, so um, what we are looking to, okay, and you know, this is really the for, first attempt uh, for into the into the attempt to try to create a standard effectively or a method of standardizing objectively and benchmarking the performance of a delivery system that involves uh, 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 that involves various the six of uh, various uh, parameters here listed on the left along with the final results which are the latency bandwidth and quality okay so uh, let me go back and forth here. So there's the six domains, which are the six different, um, shall we say, environment settings. 
Okay, and then we have the three different results. These are the measured results. So you have six different uh, you know, uh, categories of input parameters, and then you would have results. Okay, so the concept is to try to formulate or to form some kind of a objective method of benchmarking a system. Okay, so what we've come up in our thought was to create some kind of a, um, some kind of a, um, a profile, kind of similar. It came from the compression world, so I'm really into their kind of their ways of thought. But profiles, uh, we were thinking of there's a baseline compression and network profiles. Each profile was specifically address uh, a type of application. Okay, so let's start going through the um, the base profile. So in the brace pro pro profile, the concept is try to bound some of your um, your uh, your inputs. Uh, so what it, what I mean by bound is we predefine it, we fix it. Okay, we fix the uh, the content. Okay, so what we do is that you pick some specific contents, right? Okay, we would we would define and make available these contents. Okay, to those uh, to uh, to the public. Okay, but these contents are fixed, and based on these contents, okay, one will then proceed with the um, with the with measuring the parameters. Okay, so the concept is then to uh, the base profile is to fix the content. Okay, and then you try to you let the, all the other parameters serve as um, uh, the networks or the 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 the, the contribution or the differentiating values uh, uh, of the solution that's being provided. And then you measure the three the three uh, parameters: the latency, the quality, and the um, and the um, uh, and the bandwidth. Okay. Now it's pretty. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of open um, um, parameters in terms of um, of, uh, of, of, of 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 the different solutions out there. Okay. And then the second one is now let's focus specifically on a on, on the compression. Uh, aspect of this delivery system. In this case, we would then bound the content, the format, the protocol, and the network. And what we've left out in terms of uh, improvement or the differences in terms of this uh, this uh, this delivery network would be the compression and implementation. Okay. Um, keep in mind that with these, even though these two, you still have the three outputs, which is the quality. The, uh, the latency and the bandwidth. Okay, so content we would have a let's say predefined a a talking uh, talking heads, and then you would have the um, the um, gosh, I gotta make sure I have enough time here. Okay, talking heads, and then um, you know what? Let me uh, I gotta move a little bit faster. How much time do I have left? I think I have like maybe what seven minutes. Uh, yeah, that's that's about right. Okay, so. Um, I'm definitely uh, going through just two slides. I do want to have some uh, some question and answer session here. Um, so uh, then we have the network profile side, and this is where we would bound the uh, um, the, uh, the 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 four out of the six. Okay, and then we leave the network and protocol out for flexibility in terms of of, of uh, uh, measuring the effect effectiveness uh, of the network and protocol or the solutions that's out there. Okay. Um, okay, I'm not gonna go into this uh, too much detail here. So uh, some of the uh, work we did. So we've, we've, we've been looking at uh, obviously various different types of um, uh, solutions out there and did some benchmarking. And we definitely can see that depending on different encoders, uh, uh, codec systems, you can see here that, uh, you know, we can measure the, um, this is a, comp a compression pro profile uh, as mentioned. Compression is uh, an area of my um, tendency to really stick to that. So here you can see that you can actually measure the bandwidth uh, and then the the, the, the quality change. Uh, and what we've done is, and then you have the uh, the delay. But but with the compression pro profile with some fixed content um, uh, and the protocols, uh, we see that we could uh, we could start charting uh, uh, charting tables. This would be an example of how. Uh, say after we do the benchmarking, we could provide these charts. Okay, uh, a, a typical here. I have a typical kind of a test setup we have here. 
um, you know, you have a codec system, you have a switch that can then monitor the bandwidth. And then we have here, this is a, a, a unit that we, that we, uh, we provide Carnation Communications with, uh, with Jimmy University. Uh, this unit basically can, can basically timestamp the video stream and then align it, compute the, uh, the quality through a PSNR, and then it can also um, do the latency. So it, it does a, uh, a, a kind of a watermark on the video. Okay, let me uh, let me go actually to the uh, to the um, this is, this is a wiring so this is not that important but here's some parts list but uh, what I like to show you is here here's a uh, kind of a video here so as you can see um, the content we've chose a piece here would be Star Wars and you could actually live see the various uh, the three resulting parameters on the bottom you see the bandwidth the bandwidth is actually measured through a Cisco switch which then which actually counts the packets, okay? On the top right, we're actually looking at the latency of the of the end-to-end -end system. And for this case, you can't see really the, horror, the vertical, but the latency is really pretty much fixed. It jumps a little, and that is typically what we see in a lot of the encoders, especially the lower end ones, they basically drop frames or they tend to skip, okay? And so what would happen is that you would see you see these little jumps. You can see that the latency is actually changing. Okay, and then on the top left, what we are seeing is the um, the quality. So here, uh, where we're, we're seeing the uh, there's the various filters on it. So there you're seeing the different colors, but there's a min, max, and then there is a it's a sliding window kind of a quality. And you can see the um, the quality changes significantly, and and this specifically computes the PSNR between the two images. Okay, you can see the uh, uh, the, the actual live video, you can see the watermark on the bottom, which is this uh, this bar that, that moves around. But uh, uh, the, the Carnation does have another solution, which actually will not have the watermark embedded. It will actually directly align the two videos uh, just through the content. Okay, I think I am um, out of time. So I like to, um, I really like to get some feedback in terms of how we should go about, you know, um, uh, promoting this uh, and, and, and enabling some kind of a, a objective standard where we can start bringing the three parameters together and benchmarking some of the delivery systems. All right, great. First of all, thank you very much for the presentation. I appreciate that. Um, and I see Ciro has a, a hand up. I'm not sure if he meant to do that or not, but uh, Ciro, if you have a point or a response to um, you know, this question, please go ahead. Just first, uh, just a small nit on your presentation, this business of the handshake. Uh, the handshake is not necessarily uh, contributes to latency. If you have an encoder ongoing, and I'm an encoder vendor, you can do the right handshake. Once it completes, you, you switch into the stream. So you don't have to wait for a, ha a handshake. Um, the main thing I want to say is, uh, in terms of the quality management, you, you can you discuss why why you went to PSNR? It's a it's a measurement the industry has uh, has basically walked away for a long time a long time because it does not uh, um, it's not does not match well with uh, perceived quality. There are much better uh, quality measurements these days that you can use. Yes, I I want to mention that because what we have found is that. Even though there are various uh, other much better quality, since you know you're really dealing with a human uh, visual system observing the quality, the reality is that there is not, there hasn't been uh, uh, like a, like an industry wide or a um, an, an adoption of a particular measurement method that has been accepted uh, 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 as a unified uh, solution for the entire um, uh, user base. So we've used PSNR as a means of a um, kind of a baseline. Okay, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a measurement system that's been around that dated back for you know three decades, uh, and it serves as a good example starting point uh, for for you know for um, for uh, 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 as a reference. So we did uh, we did and are fully aware of the other many other types of. Uh, uh, subjective uh, solutions out there, although as a um, you know as a benchmarking system uh, and as a standard, I very much agree that we could then overlay with 
other profiles, which uses different types of uh, quality assessment uh, 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 methods. Yeah, uh, if I, my suggestion would be use uh, uh, the PSNR D100 or L100, which is what the HDR guys are doing uh, instead of just PSNR. It's, it, it, you're right, there is no industry standard, but that is very close to what everybody's using these days rather than just uh, plain vanilla PSNR. Okay. Uh, the, the other thing is you, you show the plot of uh, uh, PSNR versus bitrate, that, that is kind of something that every encoder does. It's, it's very encoder specific. Is there anything special about that? That's it's kind of part of the course that's very common. Uh, yes. so is there any contribution found, on that? Yes, what we have found is a lot of encoders don't necessarily tell the truth. So what we have found is that the encoders do not measure their peaks. So what happens is that the encoder may claim that they have this and that, like a constant bit rate, but the reality is that they don't. Okay, and they, 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 you know, they, they, they bump. They, they have uh, peaks uh, and valleys, and the peaks are the ones that we are very concerned with. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Very good. I saw that this is a proposal. And that's, a, that's interest, interesting, I, I think, to the VSF generally. Um, and I also noted you said ATM. There are some old guys like me and some others around here that uh, we, we definitely speak ATM, uh, although not fluently because it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. but, my, but my point is that uh, you talked about the, uh, a forum where this sort of thing could be discussed. Um, certainly, the, uh, I, I think BSF uh, has been active in in the areas of, of video measurement, uh, and so um, uh, as far as uh, a way forward, uh, we're really out of time now. But um, if you wanted to talk to Bob Rule about um, maybe uh, joining the VSF and having some sort of a proposal, we certainly could check with the membership and see if we have a group of people that would want to get together to talk about your uh, proposal and, and move forward with it. So um, I don't know if you have any other ideas, but I, I think that would be one way to, to move forward. And again, I, I very much thank you for coming and, and presenting. Thank you. Thank you. So you mentioned, uh, let me, uh, I, I could uh, maybe uh, uh, reconnect or connect with uh, Bob, Bob Rule. Yes, please. Yeah, I'd love to see if there's uh, enough interest in maybe start a kind of a kind of a group uh, to to build out a um, uh, uh, some kind of a proposal or a standard. Okay. Well, that that would be great, and that I think that would be the the next step. I'm I'm just curious. Are you currently in China? Uh Yes, I am. Actually. I was just going to say thank you. Then it must be. I, I didn't check. It must be in the middle of the night. And no, no, I, I love it. You know, oh, okay. I, thankfully it's at night because obviously the network is uh, is doing well. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, well, in any case, thank you so much for staying up in the middle of your night and making the presentation. And uh, please do get in touch with Bob Rule.